Hello and welcome to the return of the GMP Troll Class Review. I am your host Yoneto and today I'll be doing a remastered version of The Night. The Knight is a physical based character that uses a melee as a weapon of choice, so its focus is close range combat. It has a bonus 30% to its base maximum health, and when you level up, you get health regeneration and stability. So this class is one of the easiest class to get highest amounts of maximum health. This class also has a bad dodge, so this character has a bad speed momentum. I know you're wondering why am I doing this class again. I've changed my mind in some things about the knight, and I feel that there's a lot of things missing in that first class review. Anyways, the knight I think is a complete class. Here in this video I'll tell you why this is a complete class. And this can be used as a tank or a DPS or it's very versatile. Now, let's talk about the combat abilities and passive as well. Let's start with the basic attack. The knight's basic attack has a base multiplier of 2.5 times damage which is high amongst all characters and it is affected by attack speed. So using attack speed gear is good on this class. It has a range of 3 blocks which is average for a close range attack. It also has a very fast attacks per second, it attacks in a 2.125 times a second without any gears or dragon. And it attacks in a horizontal pattern meaning it has really good crowd control. And when you hit an enemy you will also apply the passes debuff, I'll get into that later. And that is all in this basic. Overall this basic attack is obviously good, it's one of the best basic attack in the game, high damage, fast, really good crowd control and average range. This basic attack is the best basic attack for a melee character, so I would strongly recommend using this basic as much as possible and try to get attack speed if you cannot one shot with your abilities. Now let's talk about the passive. The knight's passive ability is called Retribution and the description reads, the knight's basic attack reduces the target outgoing damage by 5%, additional attacks refreshes the debuff. So the description is spot on for the most part, so anyways, when you hit an enemy you will apply a debuff that makes your enemy do 5% less damage to all players, and this debuff lasts for 10 seconds. Hitting an enemy again will refresh its timer, and that's literally it. Overall this is probably the worst passive in the game, it literally does nothing. 5% less damage is a very low amount, if the enemy is in a lower portal, the 5% will make little difference. Same goes if an enemy is on a higher difficulty, like overnight or ultra shadow towers, again 5% will make little differences, enemy will hit really high damage anyways. Honestly forget that this passive even exists, hashtag bring the old passive back, please. The knight has two normal ability and an ultimate ability like all characters in the game, so let's start with the first ability, smash, and the description reads, damages and briefly taunts all enemies in a cone in front of the knight. So this is the 9 main damaging ability until you can get the class gem ability, I'll get into that later. Let's start with the damage. It does an 8x damage multiplier which is high for a damage ability. It has a range of 5 blocks in distance which is average for a close range ability. And it attacks in a cone in front of the knight meaning it has amazing crowd control. This ability also applies a taunt that lasts for 3 seconds. Taunting doesn't work on time bosses just to let you know. And this ability has a 1 second animation startup, so this ability will feel very clunky. And for that delay in damage, overall this ability I will still say is average. It has the same problems as the Lunar Lancer's Crescent combo. It is a very strong ability, but if you don't kill an enemy with that first attack, it will feel very slow and very clunky to get the second one to come out. Still, like I said before, this is the nice main attacking ability until you can get the class gem ability. The damage is still very high and it has a lot of one shot potential. It has also amazing crowd control. I would recommend you to spam this ability as much as you can until you can get enough attack speed that you can do at least 4 attacks per second, which is roughly 185% of your stat value. If you cannot attack 4 times a second with your basic, then this ability will do more DPS than your basic. As for anyone that can one shot a boss with this ability, then use it instead of using the basic attack. The second ability which you get at level 3 is called Charge and the description reads, launches the knight forward, taunting, stunning and damaging passing enemies. This ability is the knight's mobility ability tool, so it's meant to be used as a movement speed tool. Anyways, let's start with the damage. This ability does a 4.5 times damage multiplier which is below average damage ability, and it has a lunging range of 14 blocks which is a very long lunging range. This ability also has a weird property on hit. Since this ability does have a 3 block width, it means that you can hit an enemy even if you didn't hit the enemy directly. 
If you don't hit the enemy directly, you will go through that enemy. But if you hit an enemy directly with the tip of the charge, you will stop mid travel. But if you do hit the enemy directly, it will do a 3x3 AoE damage that does 4 times damage. Meaning if you hit an enemy directly with this ability, it does have an 8.5 times damage potential, which is a very high damage ability. And also if you hit any blocks with the tip of the charge, you will stop as well. And this ability also stuns for 1 second, which will make this one of the few abilities that can permanent stun enemies. If you have enough energy regeneration, and you can activate this ability in midair to halt the falling. Even though the description says it taunts, I cannot confirm if this ability does in fact taunt an enemy, so keep that in mind. And that is all on this ability. Overall this ability I did say once it was average, but I changed this ability to be good. The damage is not the best, but it has higher potential damage than the smash, it covers a lot of ground when you activate it and it can stun. It is a really good mobility tool and it can do really high damage if you hit the enemy directly. Still, I will still recommend you to use this ability as a mobility tool. The damage is good, but if you don't hit the enemy directly, miss, or hit a wall, it will take longer than the smash to come out, and this ability does cost a lot more energy than the smash. And the crowd control on this ability is not as good as the smash as well. Still, use this ability to move from dungeon to dungeon, because this will make you run even faster than mounts, and if you want to move effectively, then use energy regen for more dashing. The ultimate ability which you get at level 5 is named Iron Will, and the description reads Fully heals the knight and reduces incoming damage by 50%. 7 nearby Trovians take 10% less damage and redirect 10% of incoming damage to the knight for 10 seconds. This is the only ultimate ability in the game that doesn't do or affect your damage output in any way, so don't expect any damage boost, damage in general, or changes to any abilities. Anyways, moving on. When you activate this ability, you and nearby allies will get some bonuses. First, you recover 100% of your health, so you pretty much get a free flask. You will also get a 50% reduced to incoming damage while this ult is active, so you will become more tanky. And you will also get 100% to your stability, so you don't get knocked around everywhere. And 7 players within 8 blocks in distance will also get this shield, reducing their damage taken by 10%. And 10% of the damage that other players get is directly redirected to the knight, so the knight will take 10% of the damage that other player gets, which is very bad especially if you are a DPS knight, since this will kill you a lot if you are not careful. And that is it with this ult. Overall, I will still say that this ultimate ability is average. It's a very useful ability and it can serve you as a panic move if you get a hit for a lot of damage. But it doesn't help you out in any way besides that, and not to mention the damage redirected. <laughs> oh boy. Still. Use this ability as a panic move, or if you are in a long battle like in Shadow Tower, then use this ability on cooldown so your flags last a little bit longer. And this ultimate ability lasts for 10 seconds and it has a 40 second cooldown. That's all on the abilities, now let's talk about the one of the strongest abilities in the game, the Glass Gym ability. Why do I say this is one of the strongest abilities in the game? I'll tell you why. It's called Spear Squire, which reads, Charge no longer propels you forward, instead a spear squire charges forward through multiple enemies, dealing damage and stunning them. This is an amplification of the really good mobility tool called Charge, which pretty much makes it do the complete opposite. Why is that? Instead of being a mobility tool, now it's a normal damage ability like Smash, and pretty much makes Smash useless if you have the classium. Anyways, let's start with the damage. It changes your damage multiplier from 4.5 times damage to 8 times damage, which is a pretty big difference. But remember that you lose the light AoE damage that charge normally does. So technically it does lose a 0.5 times damage multiplier potential, but it still is a guarantee 8 times damage. It no longer has a 14 block lunging range, now it has a 9 block attack range, which will make this a really good close range ability. It also changes the attack width from 3 to 4 blocks, so it gains crowd control. Speaking of crowd control, this ability can now go through enemies, making the crowd control excellent, and it keeps the stun on enemy hit, making this one of the few abilities that can permanent stun enemies. Once again, stun doesn't work on Titan bosses, and it reduces the energy cost per cast, meaning you can use this ability more times before you run out of energy. And that is all in this class gem. Overall, this is one of the best abilities in the game, period. It has really high damage, it goes through enemies, it's stunned, the crowd control is just ridiculous, the range is good enough for a close range character, and it's an instant cast ability that you can throw at least close to twice a second. It has everything that you want for an ability, and it's honestly one of the reasons why I think the knight is so good in shadow towers, if you want to clear shadow arenas and dungeons, and not to mention it has a lot of one-shot potential on adventure portals. Do I recommend this class gem though? 
I would still say it's optional, just because you lose the mobility and you already have an ability that does the same damage, and the basic attack is very good on its own as well. So if you're planning to use the knight as your main then go for it, since this will surprise you on how good this ability actually is. But if you want to use the knight as a dungeon farmer exclusively, then you can skip the class gen and use the charge to move around quickly. But you can use the class gen if you're going the movement speed route if you don't want to dash around everywhere. Anyways, that's the class gen. Now for the best utility subclass in the game. But normally I would play the old subclass explanation here but I decided to make a new one for future videos. So if you don't want to hear it, go to the timer on screen or the timer in the description if you want to skip it. If you don't want to skip it, here's the new subclass explanation. Enjoy and I'll see you in a bit. Before I talk about the subclass, let me explain what and how the subclass works. What is the subclass? The subclass is an extra ability that you can equip as soon as you hit one class to level 10. After one class gets to level 10, every class can equip a subclass no matter the level. You can only equip a subclass for another class, so you cannot use the subclass of the class that you're using. Anyways, moving on. There's one ability and one stat bonus increase with each subclass. The stat increase is based around your character level and the ability that it grants is determined by power rank. As of right now, there are 6 tiers of each category. The stat boost starts at level 1. From level 1 to level 9, it will give you the tier 1 stat boost of that subclass. Then, it's level 10 when you get the second tier. And every 5 level, it will keep increasing the stat boost tier until you reach level 30, which is tier 6. Same goes with the subclass ability. It starts at 1 power rank, so from 1 power rank to 4999, is tier 1, 5000 is tier 2, and every 5000 power rank it will keep increasing the tiers until you can reach the current highest tier which is 25000 power rank. Also equipping a subclass it will grant you a bonus power rank increase. It works the same as the stat boost increase so it's based around your character level, but on every tier it will grant you 50 bonus power rank. Capping also at level 30 which will give you a bonus 90 power rank when equipping a subclass. And this power rank increase doesn't count towards the power rank ability tier so you will see that your character is lower than usual than when equipping a subclass. Alright, welcome back and here's the subclass. The nice subclass Mounted Cavalry increases the mount speed while on the ground and it also gives extra flask capacity based on your nice level. Tier 1 on character level it gives you 1 extra flask capacity. Tier 2 is 2, Tier 3 is 3, Tier 4 is 4, Tier 5 is 5, and Tier 6 is 6 extra flask capacity. And the subclass on power rank is the increased mount speed on the ground. It only increases the speed while on the ground, just to let you know. So it doesn't count if the mount is gliding and it works with every mount. So that includes mounts with lower movement speed like the turtle tank or slow Sebastian, so you will get benefited a lot. One more thing, this subclass does not work on the Dino Tamer ultimate ability, just to let you know. Since this is a pretty popular question around the community, the power in tiers increases the speed on the mount while on the ground. Tier 1, your mount will run at 95 base movement speed. Tier 2 is 97, Tier 3 is 100, Tier 4 is 105, Tier 5 is 110, and Tier 6 is 120 base movement speed while riding a mount. So yeah, upgrading this class for the subclass is well worth it. Also leveling up your knight to level 30 is also very well worth it for the extra flash. So if you're using a flash like Death Defiant, then this will help out a lot. Anyways, that's the subclass. Overall, this subclass, like I say, is the best utility subclass in the game. It will make your survive longer and the mount movement speed increase is very good as well for all classes that doesn't use movement speed on gear. So it will help out a lot. Unfortunately the knight is the only class that cannot use this subclass because you cannot use your own subclass. It's a shame because that alone is why the knight is the slowest moving class on Trove. Nevertheless I would recommend you to have the knight at least unlocked because this does help out a lot on mounts such as the turtle tank and slow Sebastian for those who doesn't have any other mounts. That is all on the knight. Before I did rate this class as average, now I rate it as a good class. Since like I said before, this class is a complete class. It has an amazing basic attack. Excluding the passive, all of the knight's abilities are very useful. That includes the classium and not to mention the subclass because the subclass is amazing. And one more thing, this class is also a starter class, meaning that you can get this class as early as the start of the game. And you can unlock it using the starter class that you get free from the store. Seriously, I would strongly recommend anyone to use the knight or have it at least unlocked. I know that this is my main class but I'm not trying to be biased, just to let you know. I'm just giving you my honest recommendation. 
my key recommendation is to get critical damage second stat on all pieces of gear. Meaning, if you want to go with the attack speed route, then you can go crit damage and attack speed. And if you want to speed farm dungeon, then you can try to go as fast as possible with the knight, then go critical damage movement speed. Just to let you know, I also tested attack speed movements with this class, without the class gym, but it is not as effective, but it's really fun to play. As of the ring, I would recommend you to get energy regen, especially if you're not using the class gym. Energy regen with the charge ability, you will move incredibly fast. And if you had the class gym, then the energy regen is only useful if you cannot kill enemies with at least one or two spear squires. And also, critical hit is very nice, especially if you're using the class gym, since the class gym is kinda slow. Anyways, thank you for watching, let me know what you think of the night in the comments below. Also, which class I should do in the next episode? Yes, Troll Class Review is back, finally, so leave it in the comments below which class I should do in the next class review. There's also a playlist with all the Troll Class Review videos, so if you want to check it out, it's in the description below. Leave a like for the return of the Troll Class Review, and subscribe if you want to see more content like this, and that is all for today. Once again, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you next time, take care, and keep on hunting. See ya.